Wherever there's water transport, there are tugs. Tough, powerful little vessels without which any big port would come to a standstill. Busily pulling lighters to and fro, they keep the docks moving. There are nearly a thousand of them in Britain. Down the Thames at Greenwich, 62-year-old skipper Stanley Smith, OBE, 35 years a tugmaster, goes aboard his modern diesel vessel. His tug's job, with its 1,200 horsepower engine, is to guide ships safely downriver, then bring others up to the docks. When there's a high wind, it's a tricky job. Although diesel engines are replacing steam in most of Britain's tugs, there are still some of the old paddle wheelers working, like this one on the River Weir at Sunderland. Some of these tugs are nearly 60 years old and still doing a full day's work. Even the greatest and most powerful ships need the assistance of tugs when they're in confined waters. The 81,000-ton veteran Atlantic liner Queen Mary needs six of these bluff-bowed toughies to ease her away from the quay and to help her to the open sea. The Queen's engines are pushing her along, but the tugs help her enormous bulk to be manoeuvred in the confined space of Southampton docks. With one queen safely on her way, another, the 83,000-ton Queen Elizabeth, is lying alongside nearby, waiting to go in for her annual six-week overhaul. This means going into dry dock, so tugs are needed, six more of them, to manoeuvre her into dock. All right, get the line out. Horses are got across, and the tugs take up their positions at bow and stern. All right, take the line away. Everyone must work together, the tug skippers, their engine room staffs, the liner's crew, and the men ashore. All is ready, the ensign is lowered, let go. The tugs come into their own now, their great single screws churn away, and slowly the 83,000 tons of ship is moved sideways from the quay. The Queen Elizabeth's engines are turning slowly, and from the bridge, the Commodore watches everything as she moves towards the dry dock. She's got to be swung round so she can slide straight into the narrow dock. On the dockside, men are waiting for her. She's into position now, and the tugs get behind her and push. They must also be ready to pull back if she goes in too fast or is sheared by a sudden gust of wind. But soon she's safely dry docked and another tug's job is finished while the dock workers swarm aboard for the refit. Apart from harbour and coastal work, large ocean-going tugs like the Marinia from Britain take on special towage jobs all over the world. She's leaving Rotterdam with a massive barge for the West Indies, a 40-day trip of 5,000 miles. Also from Rotterdam, two Dutch ocean-going tugs are towing this awkward-looking load to the Persian Gulf. What is it? It's a 275-foot-long pontoon loaded with three oil derricks. It's over 100 feet high and weighs 2,000 tons, and there's no means of steering it. It'll take anything from one to three months to cover the 6,500 miles. For the 21-man crew of a deep-sea tug, once the tow is safely clear of land, life settles down to a routine. And while the weather's fair, they can relax. But with bad weather comes trouble. The tow often becomes unmanageable, 
and at worst, it may have to be slipped to be picked up again when conditions improve. Apart from towing, ocean-going tugs are always on the lookout for a salvage job, like this ship that's run aground. If successful, it means a fat bonus for the tug crew. In Cornwall, coast guards keep watch on a stricken ship. As a report is sent out, there are probably two or three ocean-going tugs within a few hundred miles listening for such a signal. Then it's full speed ahead, for a salvage operation usually goes to the first tug on the scene, in this case, a Dutchman. The crew of the stricken ship have been taken off by lifeboat, so the tug must get some men aboard to attempt the salvage. No easy job with a high sea running. is cut across from the tug, lying in deep water, to the ship. The 50 pound a week tug captain, with a chance of earning an extra thousand pounds on this job, has the safety of his own crew and ship to think of too. As high tide approaches, when there'll be most water under the stranded ship, the tug makes her attempt. She'll make a straight pull first, trying to get her off the way she went on. If that fails, She'll shear this way and that, trying to free her from the rocks. And if that doesn't succeed, then, as the tide begins to fall, she'll wait for the next high tide to try again. There's no bonus for trying, only for succeeding. They tried for five days to get this ship off. Then, on the sixth morning, defeat. During the night, the ship had capsized. So, with all her crew back on board, the tough little seahorse prepares to leave. Her skipper and crew ready and willing to tackle the next job, wherever it may be. Thank you.